Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the 3500 generic dually, which I have absolutely no possible clue on the face of the earth what this could be based on. Hmm. 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 Yeah, no clue. <laughs> But once again, with that being said, let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. And not only are we going to have a look at it, but we are going to take a look at a basically an in-depth look at the performance of what you can do with a lot of the different upgrades. Because there are some upgrades on this truck that you don't get on a lot of other rigs. And of course, I'll be leaving a link in the description box down below. And I will also update the comment section with a pinned comment if and when this thing makes its way to consoles. Which I don't really see any reason why it wouldn't because it's completely you know debadged console friendly and as long as everything goes well in testing and it doesn't have any hiccups it should be good to go so let's go ahead and check the suspension modes now one of the most interesting things is even on the base suspension you can actually raise just the rear to help with towing capacity which is really really nice so let's go ahead and put that rear suspension back down though and head into the garage and see what we can do I love how it literally comes with the stacks and the gooseneck hitch and the bumper hitch, like, right off the bat. Like, you don't even have to worry about either one of those things. Interior looks sick as well. Really, really good. Had a little bit of, like, phase four frame lag uh, glitching right there. But you know what? It's one of those things that it goes back and forth and it'll end up getting resolved at some point soon. Now, let's go straight into the customization. So, your base power to weight is going to be a C+, plus, but that can quickly increase to a B-, minus, or you could just go for the full beans and go for the S+, plus, which I would definitely recommend. I mean, I don't really... I don't really see the point of going with the B minus engine unless you're looking for a maybe a very campaign focused build. But even then, a lot of the trucks that are going to be similar to this thing in the campaign that are in the base game are going to be an S plus powered weight rating. Now, granted, an S plus in this thing is a little bit crazier than a, say, for example, an S plus in a base campaign truck. But either way, you're definitely going to be getting a fun experience. So let's go ahead and throw the performance engine in this one. And we have stock. Highway and off-road for the gearbox options, but I'm going to personally go with the highway option because the highway gearbox literally just has more gears, but it also still retains the all the low ranges that you can use for off-roading. So let's go with the highway box, and suspension-wise, you have stock, flex, and lift. Now, I'm going to go for the lift because with the lift, you can still raise the rear of the truck so you get a little bit of that weight assistance in the back for towing ca uh, capacity. So let's go ahead and go with the lift. And tires-wise, you got four options. 38-inch generic off-road, Maxxis Roxilla Duels, Pitbull Duels, and Assassinator Duels. Now, these I would really only recommend if you're going to be going full mud truck on this thing. But personally, I'm going to go with the Pitbulls, actually, because I think they look really, really good. Um, you get one winch option, which really, at the end of the day, you don't really need to change the winch option. It's, it's, it's already tuned to what this truck is going to need. And you can do a heavy bumper, a weighted bumper, if you so desire. You can either keep the stacks or take them out. And as you can see, if you wanted to take them out, you're definitely going to get a little bit more of a kind of a more like realistic OEM plus kind of look with the truck. But if you want to throw them back in, you can do that as well. And you can do saddle high and saddle low for actual semi-trailer hauling, which is something that I think not a lot of people, not a lot of people kind of, you know, approach this truck with the idea that you're going to be able to pull semi-trailers with it. But you can if that's what you desire to do. So I'm going to go ahead and probably... I'm going to probably go ahead and throw the heavy bumper on this one. And we have dev tools, of course, because we're in a testing grounds map that we can adjust uh, the different options with. So I'm not really worried about that. Now, visuals wise, we have a circular light bar, which I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why it says circular. I think it probably just says circular because the actual pods are circular. It's not necessarily a curved light bar, but the pods themselves are circular. So we're going to go with that because it actually looks pretty cool. Fuel Mavericks are your only wheel option right now, which honestly, I'm not mad about because they're a really good looking wheel and color options wise you do have a full range of colors to choose from and i think this thing looks really good in blue i've always thought blue looks really good on these trucks but once again that is a element of personal preference and that is completely 100 up to you guys and i even like this kind of lighter blue green but i'm definitely going to go with this i think that the i think like a lighter blue that still has some depth to it is really really good for this truck currently this thing has no interior customization so sad no beans on the dash but you know what Maybe it'll come in the future. So let's go ahead and leave the garage now 
and see what this thing is like to drive. Now, some of you may have seen this truck on one of my recent live streams where I actually drove it with Diesel Addict, and that live stream replay is available on my channel if you would like to check it out. But let's go and fire this thing up and see what it's like to drive. I love those lights. Those lights look so good. Those lights look so freaking good. And like I said before, even though we are a little bit higher up than before in terms of lift, we can actually go ahead and still raise that rear suspension to once again help with extra heavy loads. So let's go ahead and put it back down though. And let's see, whoa. All right, let's see what you can do in terms of trailers. Now, I'm sure this thing is enabled for Red's Gooseneck trailer pack, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's also enabled for many other trailer packs. Currently, it, it appears that we only have the default trailers turned on, but as you can see, say for example, the Super Heavy is available as an option. Now, would I recommend this for campaign use? That's 100% up to you. Now, if I change the suspension mode, if I raise it up, and then we bring it over here to the cargo area and we load it up. There's that phase four frame lag again. Um, it's definitely something that I hope they address soon because currently in the public test server, they already have that issue addressed. But this one I wanted to record on the live game to see what this truck performed like on the current version of the live game. Now, if you're watching this video in the future, your live game may not do this. But once again, the devs are working hard to address that frame drop issue. Now, let's go ahead and see what this does when we throw some proper weight on the back with the rear suspension raised. Now, whoa, rocket engine assembly. That's so sick. Yo, that's so cool. Stage three fuel tank. You could do a Sequoia tree on the back. Tell you what, we'll do a Sequoia and we'll do, so that's five units taken up. Let's do two units of special cargo and then one unit of concrete blocks. Now we're full. And look, it's not actually even sagging all that much. And really, at the end of the day, you could actually just lower the suspension back down and still have okay performance. I mean, really, it only comes into play when you hit the throttle and the suspension squats. So I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So let's go ahead and come to a complete stop and we'll raise the rear suspension up. And as you can see now, when you get on the throttle, the suspension will squat to level. So resting will be a little bit higher, but when you actually get that that drop, that squat of the suspension, it will now squat to level with the rear suspension having been raised. So we'll drive it like that for a little while, and I also think that that weighted bumper on the front end is definitely keeping it down a lot. So let's make our way down to some of the first obstacles and see how this thing does. Now, it's already right off the bat, like exceeding all of my expectations for the fact that I have all this weight on the back. I mean, look at that. Holy crap, like I said, like I said, S Plus for this is very different than a default game S Plus. I mean, look at the amount of weight that we are pulling behind this thing. It is absolutely tremendous in terms of weight. And once this thing makes its way to consoles, dude, there are gonna be like, there are gonna be people that will have their minds blown by what this thing is actually capable of doing. Let's actually, ooh, let's look at it during the night because I want you guys to see it. Whoa, look at that. Look at the freaking lights, dude. The lights, oh my god. Well, you want to light up the night in front of your truck. That's how you freaking do it. Holy crap, that's wild. Let's see. Oh, I did not mean to turn the engine off. Turning the engine off was the last thing I meant to do, I'll tell you that. But, wow. Wow, what a great looking setup. And what a great looking truck. I mean, you literally position the freaking uh, free cam exactly where you want to and my god you have a gorgeous setup to look at you have an absolutely freaking gorgeous setup to look at and honestly like i'm really glad that people are you know people are messing around with these newer trucks now you know what i mean because a lot of the mods that you see are trucks that are either kind of you know early to mid 2000s or maybe just a little bit newer but you don't necessarily see people messing around with you know uh modded versions of brand new trucks a lot of the time and i think it's really really cool because these are trucks that we see on the road every day these are trucks that we see on job sites every day and i think we all really connect with seeing these newer vehicles and so i'm really glad that the modding community is starting to uh incorporate a little bit of these newer trucks kind of into their uh, into their modding formula so let's go ahead and raise that suspension back up once again to, to help get that grip dialed in and oh running into a little bit of issue with the trailer legs but it's all right easy 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 once you get the trailer legs past that little uh, rise in the terrain you're fine and the uh, the raisable rear suspension also helps that a lot I mean it really helps you 
position this truck where you'd actually like to position it rather than having to kind of, you know, take weird routes all the time. So let's actually see how it does in the mud with a proper load behind it. And I feel like it's probably going to do pretty well, but this is high range in the mud with a fully loaded eight unit super heavy. So let's see how she do. Oh, starting to sink. Yup. Well, that lasted a little while, and then it did, well, it didn't last much longer after that, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it was not having a good time. It was certainly not having a good time. Let's throw it into, we'll put it in low and see how she goes. I think it really, at that point, the reason for it sinking was solely based on the wheel speed factor, and solely based on the fact that, like, in this game, the physics system does not respond well to high wheel speed in mud. It just does not, it's not programmed to respond well to that. It is programmed to respond basically in the sense of, oh, deep mud, high wheel speed, you're gonna sink no matter what. So, and not always, it really all depends on the weight of the truck and how the truck is coated, but definitely if you're running a lot of weight and you try to approach mud with a lot of wheel speed, yeah, you're gonna sink gets it done i mean it makes its way through and that's the thing is that it genuinely these upgrades make this truck genuinely usable in a campaign scenario both as, as a scout a kind of support vehicle and definitely a tow rig i mean this is right on par with some of the modded semis that i've driven and the fact that we have a pickup truck that is on par with modded semis huge dude like that is absolutely nuts i mean Look at what we're freaking pulling right now. And I don't feel like there's any way that anybody could, you know, could say that that is not impressive. I mean, I guess you could say that's not impressive, but holy cow. I mean, I don't know where you'd, you would be basing this not being impressive. Now, could you say it's not realistic? I mean, sure. Sure, you could definitely say it's not realistic. But man, at the end of the day, like, if you want to run a realistic setup, this thing has the engine options to allow for that and if you want to run lower power those options are absolutely 100 percent available to you now before we wrap up this test there's one more thing that we must do and you guys know exactly what that is and we're gonna head straight out to it right now and of course i am talking about the bridge jump and you know what literally because of the fact that i don't think it'd be a wise idea to try to make all those turns especially with those pipes right there i'm gonna head straight through the rock field i'm literally gonna head straight through the rock field because there's really not much reason to try to make those two other turns when your trailer is this long and your whole entire setup really is this long yeah you kind of want to avoid those other turns and this is coming from somebody that enjoys maps with a lot of turns you know what i mean like I enjoy negotiating turns on maps like this whenever you have like a truck that's not so incredibly huge that the turns literally become like an actual issue for the truck. But at this level, it genuinely becomes an actual issue for the truck. So once again, you're starting to see a little bit of that phase four frame lag again. And once again, that will be getting addressed soon. Um, it's not a permanent thing. It has already been addressed on the public test server and will be getting addressed on the main game very, very soon. Uh, especially for those of you that play on ultra settings on PC, as I do. So let's make our way up this hill. Whoa, it got a little sketchy right there. Yeah, we're definitely going to run into a little bit of that phase four frame lag as well when we leave the jump, but let's just see how it does anyway. Oh God. Oh God. Turn. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't quite turn in time. That's a little annoying, but yep. And then you switch into interior view and it's like, oh yeah, we're going to do some frame lag again. Oh no, you don't. Come on. I am not down for that. I'm not at all down for that. That's one of those things where it's like, if you're going to get the trailer stuck at the top of the hill, like, let's not let that be a thing. Just a little more. A little more. There you go. All right. Interior. Full send. Full send. Working gauges, by the way. They look sick. There's seventh gear. Okay, phase four frame line coming in hot. Boom. You know? A lot of body damage, but very little damage otherwise. I mean, very little suspension damage. Not really all that much to worry about, frankly. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video and enjoyed this test of this truck. And I cannot address enough the fact that that Phase 4 frame lag is a little bit of a glitch with the latest update on the live build. But it has already been fixed and addressed in the public test server and it will be making its way, or the fix, I should say, will be making its way to the main game very soon. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe. 
subscribe if you're new, turn those notifications on, and I'll see you guys next time.